So the first thing we're going to do is create an actor blueprint. So if you right click, go to blueprint class, and then select actor. Name this lock and key, or whatever you want to name it. And then double click to go inside this blueprint. So now we're in our app to blueprint, we need to add our meshes. So if you go to the top left, to add component, go down to static mesh, and rename this. With your static mesh selected, go to details, down to static mesh, and then we can choose our mesh. So I've created this wall in Maya, and I've cut the door out of it, as we're going to animate this door separately. So we need to add our door now. So it's the same thing. Go to add component, static mesh, rename it. With it selected, go to details, down to static mesh, and choose your mesh. Notice my pivot point is where the hinges would be in the door. So it swings over, swings open correctly. We just need to move this in our doorway. That looks about right. So now we need to add our box collision to check whether our, whether, whether our playable character is in proximity of the door. So again, add component and then search for box collision. And then let's move this up. We want it about the same size as the doorway. So remember to use your respective tools up in here. So go. That's about right. And now we want to attach this to our default scene route. So drag it up to where it says default scene route and then attach. This will stop the box collision moving with the dot. Yeah, so it'll stop it, sorry, from moving with the doorway. So compile and save, and that's that done. So what we need to do now is rotate the door when we enter the box collision, and for the door to close when we leave the box collision. So we can do this by using a timeline. So if you right click, Search for add timeline. Just this one here with a clock next to it. What this does, in, it increases or decreases a value over a set amount of time. So if we double click on this, we can add a float track. We can name this, so I'm gonna name my rotate. Similar to the level sequence, it uses keys. So if we right click, we can add a key to the curve flow. So now we can adjust the time and the value. So we want our time to be zero and our value to be zero. If we right click again, we can add another key we want our time to be one second and our value to be 90. If you're struggling to see how you click your keys, you can click this here and you can see your keys there. So at the moment our timeline doesn't end after one second. So we need to change the length, so we'll just change that to one and we'll adjust our timeline.
So that's this finished. So what it's going to do is over one second, it's going to increase our value from zero to 90. So if we go back in our event graph, so at the moment it's increasing the value of nothing. We want it to increase the rotation. So if we get our door static mesh from our components, we'll just drag that in, and then off of our static mesh, we can search for a set relative rotation. At the moment, we can't choose the axis we want to rotate it on. So if we right click on our new rotation and then split struct pin, and we want to rotate it on its Z axis. So off of rotate here, attach it to our Z axis, and then off of, off of update, attach it to set relative rotation. So when we overlap, we want it to open. So attach it to play. And when we close, and then we, sorry, when we leave our box collision, we want it to close. So I'll attach that to reverse. So when we enter our box collision, it'll play. So it'll increase the axis to 90 over one second. And then when we leave, it will reverse it. So it'll go from 90 to zero closing our door. So if we compile and save this, I've already dragged my actor in, I'll show you how to do it. So it's literally just select your actor and then drag that in. So it's a bit small, go to your details. I'm gonna increase mine to three. So this little padlock is locked, it'll increase the scale equally. That looks all right. So I'll play to test my game. So when I walk up, it'll open, and then when I leave, it will close. So at the moment, when we enter the box collision, the door opens automatically, but we might want the door to open on a key press. So if we go back into our active blueprint, double click, back into our event graph, we're gonna detach our timeline, so all on left click, all on left click, let's drag this over a bit for some space. So off of cast a third person character, off after on begin overlap. Search for enable input. So the enable input enables act, the actor blueprint to listen out for inputs from the player. So when we overlap, it's going to listen out for an input from, from the player. So we want to disable this when we leave our box collision, sorry. So we're going to search for disable input. So it will stop listening out when you leave. So now we need to add our player controller. So right click and search for get player controller. And then let's attach this to player controller. So we need to choose a key to press. So I'm gonna search for, sorry, I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna search for D key. So just this one here, the keyboard next to it. And then off of pressed, I want it to play. And then I want it to close again when I leave the box collision. So when overlapping with a third person character, it enables input allowing the player to press E to then rotate the door on its said axis. And then leaving the box collision reverses the timeline 
rotating the door back. So I'll compile and save that. Press play to test our game. So when I press E, nothing will happen because I'm not entering the box collision. So when I run up to the door, press E, the door will open, and then when I leave, it will close. So now we need to lock this door until we find a key. So we can do this by right-clicking, go to Blueprint, Blueprint Class, and then we're going to create another actor blueprint. And we're going to name this Key. So we double click to go in our key blueprint. We're going to add another static mesh to represent the key. So static mesh, we're going to name this key. And I'm just going to use a cube to represent the key. You can use any static mesh you want. Going to scale this down. And then I'm going to use another box collision to check if our player is overlapping with this key. I'm going to scale this up. You can see it there. And then your key static mesh. Don't forget to change the collision to no collision so we can we don't keep bumping into the keys. And then for aesthetic reasons, I'm going to add another component. I'm going to search for rotating movement just to draw the player towards it. So if I press simulation, you can see it just rotates the key. I'm going to compile and save this. So now if we go into the event graph, we can start blueprinting again. So if we select our box collision, Go to the details on the right, down to events, we're going to add another on component begin overlap. And then again, off the exec, we're going to cast to our third person character. Or remember, if you're using a different character, to cast to them. And then our other actor, attached to object. So now we need to check if our player has acquired the key. We're going to use, do this using a variable. So we need to go into our third person character blueprint, or again, if you're using a different blue, a different character, go into their blueprint. So we'll compile and save. Down to third person BP, blueprints, and then inside your third person character. So you can add a variable down here. So if you click this plus button, variable, we're going to add a boolean. So if we go up to the details here, you can change the variable type. It's already a boolean, so we don't need to change it. We just need to rename it. So I'm going to name mine key. So a boolean is either true or false. So what we want to do is when the boolean is true, this means we've acquired the key. And when it's false, it means we haven't picked it up yet. So if we compile and save, we need to go back into our key blueprint. So lock and key and then double click on your actor blueprint. So if we go off as third person character here, we can search for set and then whatever you've named your variable. So mine's set key. This means we can set it to true or false when we overlap with our with the box collision. So if I just hook this up so we need to say it's true. So if we just tick this box, it means when we overlap with our box collision, it's going to set this variable true. So finally, we want to destroy the actor after we've overlapped it, so it will disappear, giving the illusion we've picked this key up. So off the exec, just search for destroy actor, just here. So when we overlap, with our box collision with our third person character, we'll set 
our variable true, our boolean, and then destroy our key. So compile and save. Go back into your doll blueprint. We only want to enable the input, so the active blueprint to look out for an input if our variable is true. So if we alt and left, left click, detach it and just move this over here to create some more space. Off the exec, off our third person character, we're going to search for branch. So the branch gives us a condition. If this condition is true, it'll go off true. And if this condition is false, it'll go off false. So we want to we want to choose this condition, so this is going to be our variable. So we need to get our variable. So our third person character, and then we want to search for get key, or whatever you've named your variable. And just attach the condition. So this is going to check, this branch is going to check if our key, our boolean, is true or false. So obviously when we pick up the key, it's going to set to true. So we want to attach true to enable input. So now, when overlapping only with the third person character, it enables input only if our key pick up our key is true, allowing the player, as the blueprint is now enabling input, looking out for this input, enabling the player to press E to then rotate the door, on its set axis 90 degrees. But when we leave, it's going to disable the input, so it's going to stop looking out for an input, and then it's going to reverse our timeline from 0 to 90, closing from sorry from 90 to 0, closing our door. So I'll compile and save. And I'm going to drag my key in. Or play to test this. So if I press E now, nothing will happen. If I run up to the door, press E, nothing will happen. If I run, grab the key, it'll open my door.